All right, guys, here we go. I thought I'd go quickly through just a couple of things that uh, you're gonna have on your homework in terms of continuity. I want you to try the other ones on your own and maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Um, remember the rules for continuity. A function is continuous at a specific point C, some unknown number that we'll give you. You'll see it over there. If and only if, now remember, remember, it has to satisfy all three tests. Okay, so the first test is uh, the function is defined at that point C on the x-axis. And all that means is if you put C in for x, you get a, a real value out. So that means that f of C exists. The second test, um, as that function approaches uh, the, same, the same y value or output value, from the left and from the right of that x value, it has a limit. That limit exists. And we've talked a long time about limits. Uh, so I'm going to ask you to just keep looking at your notes if you need to watch a different video on limits. If you watch those videos on limits, though, it's going to take you down a rabbit hole that you don't want to go down. Last but not least, we have uh, the function value, the output, uh, that f of x approaches from each side. So is the limit the same as what you get when you put that value into the function? So we should be okay on this uh, for now. We've gone through it a lot. So I'm just going to go one last time. We're going to check for continuity on in this function and let me grab a marker uh, let's check this function here and this is the first one on your homework sheet if I'm not mistaken if I am mistaken then uh, might be a different number here it is yeah this is number one so first test put that value for X in and see if you get out a real number so, uh, our function is negative 2 over 3x squared, and we want to see if it's continuous at x is negative 1. So, let's go ahead and let's see what f of negative 1 yields for us. And what that means is negative 2 over 3 times negative 1 squared. Great, okay, well... 2 is just 2. Right. 3 times negative 1 squared is 3 times 1, or 3. And we had a negative value. So it's negative 2 thirds. Is negative 2 thirds a real number? Yeah. In fact, negative 2 thirds is a rational number. Okay? Anything that can be expressed as a fraction is a rational number. So we're going to move on. And we're going to test this to see if it has a limit. There are a number of ways to do this. You could graph this on a calculator. You could graph it on Desmos. And if you do use Desmos and graph it, you'll see at negative 1, it's just getting ready to take a nosedive. It actually looks on the graph. It's got a, uh, an asymptote. I think it's uh, negative. It's, it's like this, and then just dives away. And then you see it comes up and goes like, Darn, looks like that, okay? So if we wanted to talk about end behaviors, we could, but we won't, because it's, uh, it's crazy. So here we go. So I took and created tables from what I used on the calculator. So you could take, you know, go by quarters and get closer and closer and closer to negative one and then get closer and closer and closer to negative 1 from the other side. And that's what I did. So as you see, as it gets closer to negative 1, we are actually getting closer to that negative 2 thirds number, which is negative 0.6666667. But here it is. And then from the other side, 
as we get closer and closer and closer to negative one, because negative one should be right about there. It's, it's getting closer, right? It's, it's getting closer to that negative point six, six, seven. So if you look at the table there, you see that negative one says point six, six, seven. So it is approaching that from both sides. And you see as it gets closer to zero, because zero is undefined, that's why they have this asymptote there. Um, you see it, it's getting closer to that number. So we say the limit is, well, I'll transfer this to a, a fraction. It is getting close to negative two thirds. Now, if you're, you're not able to convert from fraction to decimal, it, it may be a little bit more difficult, but you see that it's real. You'll see on a graph that at that point, it, it is continuous. There's no asymptote there. There's no hole there. When you pull up the table, the table has a value for it. Therefore, there isn't a hole there or a gap. So that's basically it. The other part of the homework, uh, I just want you to try, input those values. It says which, uh, between which uh, of those integers, which, between which of those consecutive numbers is a real zero. And I want you to just start putting those numbers in and seeing what you get out using a calculator. And then you'll see where it turns from negative to positive or from positive to negative. Hey, between those two numbers, that's where you get a real number. And the last two, you know, take a look at it. See what that end behavior does. If we were looking here, and we'd say, you know, this is negative one here, this is positive one here, this is one. You know, what are, what are we approaching from the left and from the right? Well, if, if we're looking and going farther and farther and farther left, we're really getting close to that zero number. And if you think about it, as we get toward, we make this number bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It's just a smaller and smaller and smaller fraction getting uh, ever so close to zero, right? I could multiply this by uh, a thousand squared and then we have three million here. Well, it still isn't zero, right? It's two o negative two over three, three million. So we're still getting closer and closer and closer to zero, but we never touch it. It never touches it, just like the one we did in class, that it never gets to five because of that minus two. Same thing on that side. It just ends up being a positive value, right? We big, put big positive numbers in here, it doesn't matter. We're getting infinitely close to uh, zero here, and we never get there. Other than that, hey, give it a shot. Give it a try. No one's going to die because of it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you something like this as a, as a homework quiz, maybe a couple of these that were on the homework, to see what you figured out, to see what you found. Um, a couple of those first four, when you input the values that they give you, you can't have an answer because you end up with zero in a denominator. And you can say, hey, Sokol can't have zero as a denominator. So you don't get out a real answer. Therefore, number one isn't satisfied. So make sure that you're inputting the values first to see if you get out a real number because you can stop right there. By the way, the other two are, in fact, uh, continuous at those points. All right, so you have two that are continuous, two that aren't continuous, and the ones that aren't continuous at that point, uh, just because uh, they're not defined at that x equal, uh, f of c uh, doesn't exist. Good? That's it, guys. Thanks.